Hey guys, it's Special here, and welcome to episode 5 of my Southampton series for Football Manager 2016. This is, of course, the end of season review, plus a live com against the, you know, one and only Tottenham Hotspur. Not a very good club at all, but anyway, um, we'll get into the fixtures before we get into live com, and of course, after the live com, we'll do a bit of a review, go through the player ratings and statistics and stuff like that. Of course, the previous episode was the Bournemouth live com there. The 2-1 victory, the first live com victory of this series. Um, we followed that up with a 3-0 loss to Chelsea. Pretty disappointing stuff. Uh, Mertens, who was a signing they made um, in January. Pedro and Oscar also on the score sheet. Nobody really played that well for us. Uh, Rodriguez was horrible. He was substituted as well. We then played the Europa League first knockout round. We drew AS St. Etienne, as I mentioned in the previous episode. Matty, you managed to score. A Frenchman scoring against a French club. They also got an equaliser and got that away goal there. We then lost the next game, of course, the away game. 2-1. Tadic got a goal in the 89th minute for us, but they managed to score two goals. Nolan Rue, pretty decent player. And yeah, we were knocked out in the first knockout round. Wasn't too upset about it. I mean, I kind of thought we would beat St. Etienne, but, you know, it wasn't to be. I'm not too fussed about it. We got through the group stage, which is, you know, I mean, I think our expectation for the tournament was just to be competitive. So, you know, we got through the group. Quite happy with that. We then bounced back and beat West Brom 3-0 at home. G. Rodriguez bouncing back in amazing fashion, getting a hat-trick there. And, uh, yeah, played a pretty good game quite impressed. We then followed that up with a nice little 2 all draw with Manchester United. Victor Wanyama and Dusan Tadic on the score sheet for us there. Ziyech and Marta on the score sheet for United. Of course, Ziyech is a signing they made in January as well. We then got absolutely destroyed by Arsenal. 5-2. Sanchez, Chamberlain, Coquelin, Ozil and Walcott. Five different goal scorers for them. And Mane and Tadic, both of our wingers on the score sheet there for us. We then versed Everton, of course the team I did a series with uh, for Football Manager 2015, um, which was probably my best, well it is my best series so far, I think the first episode has 15,000 views on it, um, and of course Lukaku, who featured massively in that series, um, opened the scoring, and um, yeah, as you can see, they absolutely battered us. Um, quite surprising that we actually got three goals, but Rodriguez... Ramirez and Tadic got our goals, and um, yeah, it was basically 3 all, and then Naismith scored a minute after Tadic um, equaled it up at three apiece, so we're kind of unlucky to not actually get the draw there, but um, we did not deserve it by any means. We then followed that up with a 2 all draw to Newcastle, who are actually doing pretty well this season. Um, they're actually sitting above us. I think they're in seventh position, which is decent, and of course... Um, yeah, Torvin is an absolute beast on this year's game, so... Yeah, he's scored in both games this season against them. Uh, Mane and Tadic, once again, both of our wingers getting our goals there. Torvin and Papis Cisse, who... I looked I looked at his profile before the game, and I said, Wow, he looks quite shit this year. And, of course, he manages to uh, score a late equaliser. Lovely stuff. We bounce back against West Ham, who are actually relegated. I think they came... 18th or something like that. Uh, we beat them. Shane Long and Juan Mi on the score sheet there for us. Managed to steal the uh, steal the winner in the 87th minute. We then beat Swansea, who are actually flying really high as well this season. Dusan Tadic, pretty late on in the 83rd minute there, got us the win. They didn't even have a shot on target though, so they didn't look like winning. Um, then we reversed Leicester, who played an extremely attacking 4-4-2 formation. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. They had Okazaki and Kremerich, and then they had like Jamie Vardy and uh, Mares on the wings, which was, yeah, it was difficult to uh, play against. Um, Okazaki got a brace, Fuchs and Andy King on the score sheet, and uh, yeah, Wanyama got one right in the stroke of half time for us. In a absolute, you know, well, it was kind of the destruction of our team. We, we let ourselves down. They played really attacking and just. Everything went well for them, I suppose. 
We bounce back, however, against Crystal Palace, who I don't think that... Yeah, they didn't get relegated. I think it was West Ham, Bournemouth, and Stoke that got relegated. Uh, Shane Long, the goal scorer here. Palace had Joel Ward sent off and, uh, yeah, had one shot the whole game with no shots on target. We then played Norwich, lost 1-0. Pretty undeserved. Under, not a really... I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. It wasn't a, a loss that we deserved to have. Um, obviously, the goal scorer was Graziano Pella, our former player that we sold in January to them. Um, it was just meant to be. And the final game, I just played a nice little one-all draw. And as you can see, we deserved to kind of win the game, to be fair. Fraser Foster own goal in the sixth minute, and uh, Jay Rodriguez equaled it up in the 73rd. Um, but we actually looked like we were going to win this game, which is kind of disappointing. Of course, we were away from home. A couple of players didn't perform too well. Balic, who um, is, you know, a first-team starter now. Uh, Juan Mi, who came into the game to replace a disappointing uh, Ramirez, disappointed himself. And, uh, yeah, Ramirez was subbed on for him after playing a 6.3. And, of course, Shane Long, you know, he didn't play too badly, but he didn't really do anything. And we're playing one striker up top. You've got to perform. Rodriguez came on, played a 7.2, and got our goal. So, good stuff, and he will start again today as we take on Tottenham. Um, and Ihinacho's actually got a work permit decision, which is really good. Looking forward to that. We'll go into the league table before we advance there. Uh, Man City have won the league, basically. Oh, they haven't actually won the league. I, I looked at this before, and I, for some reason... I think I might have been looking at goal difference or something. I just it, like very quickly glanced over it. But yeah, 77-77. Uh, but they do have 11-plus goal difference over Arsenal, who are in second. So it goes down to the final. Um, oh, I actually want to have a look at the fixtures here. Arsenal or oh, Arsenal are facing Chelsea. That's a tough game. And City are versing Norwich away from home. So, yeah. That'll be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, but then you've got United in third, who are tied on the same points as Chelsea, so uh, they'll be fighting for that automatic Champions League spot. Tottenham have pretty much finished fifth by themselves. Um, Europa League football once again for them. And as I mentioned, Swansea and Newcastle tied on 57 points, and uh, it looks like one or maybe even both, depending if they can both get a result from their game. You know, we would have to win our game to even have a chance of uh, going ahead of them, but we have horrible goal difference anyway, so it's pretty unlikely that, you know, that Newcastle are going to lose by six goals. Um, but yeah, we can't actually finish below... Li uh, we can't actually finish below ninth, so I have basically already achieved the uh, expectation of a top-half finish from the board, which is really good. First season is always quite difficult for me. Um, I'm not that type of guy that's going to come in first season, you know, brand new game and just win the league with a team like Southampton. Decent team, but, you know, it's not realistic. And, yeah, it's kind of a good thing. It allows me to build for the future. Um, we've got a few Bosman transfers. I'm not sure if I mentioned them in the last episode. Um, we've got a new goalkeeper. Some of you guys will probably be familiar with him if you watched my Everton series from last year's game. Um, you might know who I'm talking about, but he's coming in, and um, you guys will see who that is if you don't know who I'm talking about in the next episode, which will be second season preseason. So, yeah. Anyways, let's go into the starting lineup for today. We've got Forster in goal, um, Emericio at right back, Font and Matthew. Uh, they're both playing pretty well from last game and the game before that, so, yeah. Bertrand is left back. We've got Balic and Wanyama, our two central midfielders, with Juanmi, who's going to start again. Um, he's got a, quite a bit of interest in him, actually. I'll show you this. He's got Liverpool, Man City, and PSG chasing after him. Um, it's not really an, He's more of a left winger or a striker, to be fair. So maybe I'm not really doing him justice by playing him as an AMC. Um, but yeah, I don't really want to move either of these two players in Tadic and Mane, our wingers today. Rodriguez, of course, I mentioned will start today. The bench is Gazinga, Van Dijk, Cedric, Classy, Romeu, 
Ramirez and Shane Long. Stecklenberg is obviously out with the injury there. And, uh, yeah, Davis is probably going to be moving on. Um, he's got West Ham, who got relegated, interested in him. And that is about it. So we'll advance here. That might be another reason why Juan Mi is actually playing quite poorly. He's not mat match fit at all. Um, obviously, once I went out of the Europa League and the FA Cup, I didn't really bother too much with our squad rotation because we're only playing every seven days. So it was quite easy to keep the team fit. And I got to play the team that I pretty much wanted to, barring injuries and, you know, suspensions. So here we go. Kick off Wanyama. Back to Font. Plays it to Rodriguez. Who uh, actually got caught up to the England squad for the uh, Euros. Which is, you know, it's good. Foster also got caught up, uh, but his stats have really decreased. And, yeah, I think he's kind of a, a shadow of the player he once was. So, most likely the guy I'm bringing in on a Bosman will probably be our starting goalkeeper. He's quite young. And um, I, I believe he's, you know potentially world-class, and that's a good shot by Rodriguez there, uh, just about three minutes in. Yeah, it looks like we're taking it to Tottenham at the moment, but of course they could always do some damage to us in the counter-attack. But we've got another highlight here, Balic, who gets tackled by Bentaleb, and this is what I was talking about, the counter-attack is on. Sun Hong Min lays it back. Well, the can is gone, but they've still got the quality to cause massive damage. But uh, Dembele is giving it away to Wanyama there, who just gets the ball away in time. And that's poor. Dembele again. Crosses it forward. Oh, that was nearly a brilliant goal. Oh, uh, what are you doing, Juan Mi? What was that? Shambles. Ugh, why did I play him? One shot on target for one goal. Typical, but... Anyway, it's the last game of the season. We've secured ninth, ninth spot. I would love to get a result here today, obviously on live com. You know, doing a live commentary. <laughs> it's just the camera, which can't seem to win, but that's offside there anyway. By Townsend. And Mauricio to Wanyama. Giving the ball away again. And Harry Kane is bringing Tottenham forward. Oh, nice cut out there by Bertrand. Balic plays it long. Rodriguez is in behind. He is wide though. Can he cross it? He'll shoot. And he almost scored. Corner. Tadic, that's cleared. Not good enough so far. I'm not, not really impressed at all. We've only had our first shot on target. And of course, we didn't get a goal, but that's because the game's quite jammy. Anyway, Dyer out wide. It's cleared away. Bentaleb now. Vasquez, Townsend, oh, off the post, and how did we not concede there? Jesus, that was so close. I might look to bring Juan Mi off at half, at, uh, half time, sorry. He's playing like crap, as I kind of thought he would, but anyway. That was my choice, I probably made the wrong choice there. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely get him off, because is it... Kind of an, he was at fault for that goal, 100%. And I don't really want, a, you know, a liability on the field. And we could potentially, you know, get a result here if the players aren't being, you know, making stupid decisions and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll take him off. Uh, we'll go back to the uh, oh, team talk. Sorry. I'm just going to tell the boys calmly to show me something else because, yeah, I'm not too happy with that. I'm going to go to the pitch here. Okay, they're playing Fazio at the back, like, 
how are we not scoring goals? Hmm. They've actually got possession, which is interesting because, of course, I play a, a possession-based tactic. But I, I'm guessing they probably do as well, even though they are away from home. Alright, so 60 minutes in, got a corner here. Can we score? It's cleared away. And Mauricio, Tadic, Wanyama, someone shoot please. Ramirez, Mane gets in. Is he offside? No, he's not. That's his 19th goal of the season. Not the top goal scorer. That goes to uh, Rodriguez, unless, of course, Mane can score another two goals in this game, which would be lovely, but yeah. Don't really think it's going to happen. It's pretty good. Sun, Sun Hong Min has gone off the field, which is <laughs> what makes me a little bit happier. But Ooh, Edwards. Benzleb. Oh, come on, Foster. What are you doing? It's his first goal of the season, and it's come in the last game. Foster like, didn't even move then. He just put his hand down to stop the ball, and he was nowhere near it. Thank God I'm getting a new goalkeeper. That's all I can say. Stecklenberg was better than him. And that's saying something. Rodriguez now. Can we can we pull another goal back? No, he gets tackled with the ball. Ramirez has got a bit of space here if he can get the ball. And that's cleared away. Bertrand gets it back though. Oh, oh what are you doing, Tadic? It looked like a bit of a bug, to be fair. Wanyama. Mane. Shoot. Ramirez. Oh my god. Okay, so coming to the end of the game, when Yam has played like shit as well. To be fair, everyone's played quite poorly, and that looks like it's going to be another loss. Which is really disappointing, because we've given away two really, really soft goals. Of course, the first one, Juan Mij basically giving Harry Kane the ball so he can just, you know, they can start off with a free goal. And then, of course, Fraser Foster deciding he doesn't really want to move and make a proper save like all goalkeepers should do. Can we please score here? That would be amazing. Balic gives the ball away once again. And that's full time. 2 1 loss to Tottenham. I'm going to go aggressive at the boys. That's not good enough. We didn't get dominated. We, oh, that's really annoying. Anyway, of course, that does mean we go down to ninth because Liverpool did, in fact, win their game that they had. So we finished on 54 points. You know, not the worst in the, in the world. We finished above Everton, who were on 53. Um, finished with minus one goal difference, which is really annoying. But hopefully get the new goalkeeper in. Um, maybe look at buying a defender because we've got to replace Font. He's not really good enough. He's a bit too old. I know I bought Matthew in, but Matthew's got a lot better physicals and he's got yeah a lot better technicals as well, to be fair. And I think he'll be more likely the starter of the two um, experienced boys that we do have. Anyways, that's, yeah, not going to wrap the episode up yet because we're still going to do a little bit of an end-of-season review type thing. I'm going to go over the players' statistics and stuff. Um, oh, Arsenal did win their game. They beat Chelsea 2-1. Terry own goal. That's hilarious. But uh, Man City did win their game also against Norwich, so that basically would give them the title, I would imagine. And, of course, Mane finishes uh, man of the match. And there we go. Man City have done the double. What else did they win? I think they probably won like the FA Cup or something. Hmm. Oh wow, so let me have a look at that. That said United finished on eighty points as well, but they didn't. That's silly. Anyway, that sucks. Imagine if that happened in real life this season. Oh as an Arsenal fan, I would probably cry. Oh, I definitely would cry actually. That that's horrible. So we even think about it. anyway. Um, we'll go into the squad now. We'll go through some player statistics. We'll go for average rating, 
Um, of course, was Zivkovic, who is on loan at our feeder club. Um, we got him his work permit. He looks absolutely amazing. Um, of course, I got a comment um, on one of the previous uh, episodes that said people actually were familiar with him. Um, I personally wasn't, and that's what I said in the comment. Um, I wish I was, though, because he looks crazy, and if he was this good on last year's version of the game, um, that kind of sucks that I didn't find him. Anyway, happy I found him now, and I'm happy that he's coming back to the club. Sadio Mane finished our top average rating that was actually at the club. Uh, Van Dijk, you know, started 20 games, did pretty well, so I'm not too sure about this guy. I'm really not. He doesn't really have the technical attributes that I really want. Decision making and concentration is also very low. Um, I'm just not sure. I think I'll keep him around, but maybe just as, you know, the bench player, the backup. You know, to be fair, the games that he did start were the Europa League games and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's pro probably not a true reflection. Actually, we can actually have a look at that, can't we? Yeah, oh, he did start 10 league games, but, yeah, 9, he also started 9 uh, Europa League games as well. As you can see, his average rating is quite low for the league. Um, whereas it's the opposite. It's about one whole point difference between the two competitions. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a false rating there. Uh, Tadic, the other winger, of course, to Mane, um, got a 7.30, got 16 goals, and Mane got 19, as I mentioned, during the live com. Then we got Juan Mi, who is kind of in the same boat as Van Dijk, played majority of cup games, when he started, and uh, league games off the bench. Got six goals to his name, though, and a 7.11. Again, a bit of a false rating. Quite impressed that uh, Matthew is actually up here. Of course, the January signing from Barcelona. I think it was for 1.2 million. 12 starts, one goal, 7.09. Got the exact same rating as Jerry Rodriguez, who was our highest goal scorer of the season. 39 starts, five sub-appearances for 21 goals. And, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, a 7.09. Font actually got the same as well, 7.09 from 43 starts, one sub-appearance. Of course, he's our captain, so I did try and start him um, as much as I could. Only got two goals. Probably should have got a few more. Um, Shane Long, 17 starts. Again, he probably started more Europa League games, came off the bench. Um, he probably started maybe six or seven league games, to be fair. Um, so that's not too bad. Got 10 goals, 7.08. When Yama got a 7.08, managed to chip in with 6 goals as a ball-winning midfielder. The player I'm kind of disappointed with is the next guy, Gaston Ramirez. Had high hopes, you know, that he was going to be quite a player to be reckoned with um, during the series. First season, not too impressed. 7.05 in 46 starts and 4 sub-appearances, so 50 appearances overall, and he can only manage a 7.05 and 9 goals. Um, I want to go a bit more into detail on this one, um, and just see how many assists... Okay, so in the league, he only got 4 goals, but he got 12 assists, so that's not too bad. It was just under a 7, which is not great, because you want players to be getting over 7 in the league, um, if you're going to do quite well. In the Europa League, he got four goals and one assist, which is a little bit disappointing. He is the advanced playmaker um, to our midfield. So, yeah, he got the assist in the league. Didn't really get them in the Europa League, but he got a few goals. So, yeah. Hopefully he can have a big season um, next year. And um, if not, we've got some real competition coming into the club. Um, of course, if you want to see that, or who that player is, I should say. You'll definitely need to check into the next episode, the uh, preseason, and find out exactly who that guy is. He is pretty well known. He has played in the Premier League before, and um, of course he's an AMC slash right winger. So, yeah, make of that what you will. Stephen Corker, yeah, he started a few games, 7.04 um, on loan from Queen's Park Rangers. We could buy him for $8 million. But I don't really think he's worth $8 million, to be fair. Um, yeah, 
didn't really impress me too much. So, yeah, we'll just let him go. Cedric got a 6.99. Disappointing, to say the least. He looks pretty good, but hasn't performed, and towards the end of the season, didn't perform very well. Um, the same can be said for uh, Emericio, who got a little bit lower than him, but probably performed quite well in a lot more games than he did, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, he's also improved incredibly. Like, yeah, all of his technicals have gone up a lot. His determination, for some reason, just keeps going up and up. Um, I am tutoring him with Cedric, so that's probably the reason. He's got 14 determinations, so I don't expect that to actually go any higher now. Um, but I am glad that it's 14. I think it was about 10. So he's gone up four points, which is, you know, pretty decent. Um, Ihanicio, of course, we've got that work permit decision for him. He's started seven games um, at our Bulgarian feeder club. Got three goals. Not too impressive, to be fair. But he's also improving slightly. Pace and strength and stamina going up, as well as composure. So pretty good technique, long shots and stuff like that as well. Um, Baro is our feeder club in the Bulgarian First Division. Uh, we got some other players down here that didn't really feature too much except for Bertrand and Dalic. Um, don't really want to see Foster. I mean, that's that, that's a bit of a, a lie there. 6.93 in seven games. I, I don't really see. He's performed quite poorly, to be fair. And, yeah, maybe it's just goalkeeper ratings are a bit... Yeah, a bit not... A, Probably a little bit buggy, to be fair, seeing as it is still a better version. Um, but anyway, Bertrand got a 6.83. Again, same sort of thing as Emericio, kind of started to uh, deteriorate. Of course, he did have that long-term injury, um, and Ashley Cole was his uh, replacement, who actually finished on a higher rating, which is quite interesting. But Cole's you know, stats started to, to uh, decline quite a lot um, when... I stopped playing him, so for obvious reasons, you know, I stopped playing him. Obviously, his stats are going to drop, you know, dramatically. Uh, Balic, 6.78. I don't really have, you know, I could play him as a deep line playmaker where he's most suited, and that would probably be the best thing to do, but I'm playing him currently as a central midfielder, you know, just a basic central midfielder. And I don't think I should be doing that next season. He's an absolute quality player. Can play AMC as well if we want him to. I've never really played him there. Um, so let's have a look at that. Yeah. He could probably... He could play there quite well. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, yeah, potential to be key member of the first team squad. And he's improved throughout the whole season as well. Um, <laughs> interesting that Stephen Davis actually has a higher rating than him. Um, but he only started 10 games, 5 sub-appearances, got 1 goal, and of course Stephen Davis only got 1 goal as well, so yeah, that's that. That's basically the uh, end of season review kind of wrapped up. Um, anything else to really go over? Uh, the balance has gone up a little bit. Uh, profit loss, obviously we've made a little bit of money, probably because we've um, gotten... When's that? Okay. Yeah, we've probably got now... Yeah, there we go. Our prize money for finishing ninth. And, uh, yeah, paid out 900k to the squad. So uh, that's going to wrap this episode up, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to tune in to the next one, which will be the preseason episode, where you guys will see a few of my shrewd little bargains that I've managed to pick up on Bosman transfers. They are quite decent players, and I think you'll... You'll probably be quite happy with them, especially, you know, considering they are free. And if, if things don't work out with them, I'll sell them on, make a profit, and, you know, everything will be nice and sweet. Um, so, yeah, that's it, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this first season. I know I have enjoyed playing it, even though results have kind of been a bit all over the place. We've, you know, beaten a few decent teams, gotten a few decent draws against, you know, the likes of United and Man City. And then we've lost the teams like... Uh, Leicester 4-1 and stuff like that. But, you know, what can you do? Inconsistency at its finest. We need to fix the defence. Very leaky at the moment. And um, hopefully we can do that next season. Um, drop a like if you 
have enjoyed the first season so far, guys. Subscribe if you're a new viewer, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.